If you're in Burgundy, traveling down the National Six between Paris and Lyon, look up Bernard Loiseau, considered to be one of the masters of French gastronomy. Bernard Loiseau has chosen to set up his hotel restaurant, the Côte d'Or, in Saulieu, in the heart of the Morvan region, which, as far back as medieval times, had a tradition of hospitality for passing visitors. Today, lots of people call in just for the pleasure of dining here. I began my apprenticeship with the Trois Gros brothers at 17 years old, and I said to myself, one day you'll have three stars. I don't know why, but I enjoy this competition with myself. I'm always in the starting blocks, ready for a race. Then later I met Claude Verger at Les Bannières de Clichy in Paris, and he was an astonishing character who set me up in this house and saved me 10 years of my life because he gave me everything I needed to express my talent, so that now I'm able to buy the house, and I've been able to do all the work you can see here, including the hotel, the restaurant, and all the rest. It's a real haven of peace. Nowadays, it's not enough just to provide food for your guests. They are also looking for comfort, hospitality, good service. It's the details that make all the difference that people expect today. It's a kind of dream that people are buying. Ever since Michelin gave us three stars, we've just exploded. All of a sudden, the whole place boomed. The cover page of the New York Times, ten pages in the Washington Post. We hit the headlines on all the TV channels. The day we got three stars, we were on the main evening and late night news on every channel. Today, people won't accept things that are fake. They want to return to real values. So we have this wonderful roof on the restaurant, plants in the ground, furniture that smells of beeswax. We have a clock that chimes every half hour. People are looking for their roots today. Oh, I remember. That reminds me of my grandma's cooking. The carrots stuck to the bottom of the pan, the juices that she served up with the roast veal. That's what real cooking is about today. Something simple, but using great produce. No mass-produced stuff for me. I go for the sublime, genuine article. Ah, Saulieu, that's Bernard Loiseau. Bernard Loiseau, he has an enormous advantage over other chefs because he knows how to bring out the real flavor from his ingredients. I remember, for instance, eating a poulain pot-roasted chicken at Bernard Loiseau's. It really tasted of the country. I hadn't tasted a poulain like that for years, served in a pot in the traditional style. He also cooked a fish, a pike perch in wine. Well, there was very little wine sauce, and the fish was extraordinary. The sauce was very light, and then Bernard Loiseau's vegetables are real vegetables. They have the real flavor of food. It really is a thrill for the palate, and it's a supreme pleasure for someone like me. So now I'm going to make an aubergine caviar with a tomato coulis. For this, you take some nice aubergines, which you slice in two lengthways, and you place them in the dish. You season them with salt and pepper, and you cover them with tomatoes. And then you detach all of the onions from one another and lay them out like this. Then you add some thyme, olive oil. There, the dish is ready for the oven, where I'll cook it at thermostat seven for an hour and 30 minutes. And so now we'll deal with the tomato coulis, which will garnish the aubergine caviar. So we take some tomatoes and you prepare these. We're going to plunge the tomatoes in boiling water for a minute to remove the skins. Above all, don't let the tomatoes cook, just enough to peel off the skin. If you let them cook too long, they no longer taste the same. Then the tomato has no flavor, so if the tomato has no flavor, at least it won't be Loiseau's fault. The tomato is important. You need really good tomatoes. They need to be flavorsome, ripe and juicy. Then you puree them in the blender and we remove the tomato coulis and we strain it to remove any remaining lumps which I didn't deal with and this is now strained out giving us a really perfect smooth coulis. Anything that I've left behind, any little lumps, have been removed. So it's now perfectly smooth. Now we're going to make the tomato coulis explode on the palate. 
To do this, we need some superb olive oil because olive oil goes marvelously well with tomatoes. And we add a hint of aggressiveness, using, of course, a hint of vinegar. Because when you're cooking, it's the details that make all the difference. It's the hint of vinegar, the touch of lemon juice, the pinch of rock salt. And at the right moment, that's what makes a dish different. Sometimes people say, this is a nice dish, but there's, there's something missing. It's those little details that are missing. A hint of vinegar, a touch of lemon juice, that makes all the difference. Now I try it. I always say you can't cook properly if you don't taste what you're making. How am I to know if there's enough salt or pepper? You've got to taste. I always tell my cooks, always taste what you're making. There, that's perfect. Perfectly seasoned. Once the aubergines have cooked, take a spoon and scoop out the middle. There. And then we add the aubergine skins finely chopped to the aubergine mousse. There, that's just the consistency I want. Of course, there's no cream here at all, just nature itself. And now we move on to the finishings. Here you use a kind of round mold. Voilà. And now we pour this superb coulis onto the plate and we top off with some green basil and with some violet basil, like so. And now we have a very attractive first course, aubergine caviar with its coulis of fresh tomatoes. Solio lies in the Morvan, an area once covered by forest land, but where the soil wasn't always very rich. And often, after the day's hunt, the hunters would sit down to this stew of wild boar in red wine to warm the cockles of their hearts during the long winters. There's an old saying in Burgundy, the Morvan produces neither good people nor good winds. But Bernard Loiseau compensates with his love for life and enthusiasm for shared happiness. And cooking for me is a kind of escapism. It's nature. It's my whole childhood. I was brought up in the Auvergne, and it's like going back to my roots. The Morvan is very like the Auvergne. It's extraordinary, and that's why I came here. Suddenly, you might see a thrush fly up, and boom, I shoot it. There are migrating wood pigeons in October during the season. You might see a hare, too. But I don't go hunting just to shoot, to tell people I bagged so many. I don't give a damn about that kind of thing. I like to stop somewhere. I like to put down my rifle. I like to go into the woods and pick two or three kilos of mushrooms and they give me inspiration for my cooking. I say to myself, wow, that's an idea. I do this or that and that gives me the punch I need to do my job. And now, for an original dessert, we're going to make roasted apples with a green apple coulis. So first we peel the apples. You see, these are nice juicy apples, very tasty. We remove the pips from the core. There. And now we cut them up into quarters, just thick enough so they can be nicely caramelized in some butter and sugar. If they're too thin, when they go golden brown, they will be too dry inside and not good to eat. So everything is a matter of getting the proportions right as well as the thickness. So an apple this thick will be perfect because you can cook it with some sugar and butter and it'll have time to caramelize on both sides and still remain soft and juicy inside. As for the green apples, these aren't peeled. You simply remove the stalks and you cut them up into rough pieces like this. And the apples will go with their pips into the blender where we'll collect only the juice. And we'll add even further to the acidity of the juice with a squirt of lemon juice so that the caramel sugar will mix with the acidity in the green apples and the freshness of the cinnamon ice cream which sets off the apple. So we only take the juice of the apple, that's to say the quintessence of the flavor. Nowadays the juice extract is very important to me in the kitchen because it gives you a concentrate of the juice.
So you can obtain green apple juice or parsley juice. We often put the stems of the parsley in the extractor and the little liquid that comes out of the stems can be put back into a parsley puree to give the quintessence of the flavor. So now we've put some butter in a pan and it's melting, just nicely yellowish, and we mix in our apples to get them nicely caramelized, as I said earlier, on both sides. We drop them in the butter and we sprinkle sugar over them to caramelize them with the butter and we heat them up. There, just look at the caramel on the apple, a superb caramelized apple, just right, the color of golden toast. Perfect. And now we turn them over to caramelize them on the other side. It takes about three to four minutes on a hot gas flame. Not too hot either, because the butter mustn't burn, just the right amount. There. Now we need to finish off with our green apple coulis. There. Of course, it's very cool, straight from the fridge. And now we arrange our apples very carefully. Bonjour la chaleur. Ever so warm. Voilà. There. And then, because I like fresh, cool dishes, blending hotness, acidity and coolness in the mouth, we finish off with the cinnamon ice cream. Oh, here is the cinnamon ice cream. Now, if you're really keen to do this at home, you can make it yourself on the base of a creme anglaise, a light egg custard, and you infuse the sticks of cinnamon in the creme anglaise, and you strain it, and then... When you put your spatula in and you do this with your finger like this, the cream should never come over the top of your fingers. That's how to test the cooking of a creme anglaise. There. And now you have your hot roasted apples with green apple coulis and cinnamon ice cream. With a book, it's wonderful. You see, first of all, you see it, you look into it, you dip into it, you smell it, and then after, you taste it. It's the same with cooking. When you have a dish placed in front of you, you look at it, and you say, that looks appetizing, it's nice, caramelized, it's magnificent. And then you smell the aromas with your nose, and then you taste it, and then you've already got everything, the savors coming up, and then it explodes in your mouth. I got married quite late to Dominique, who helped me to find a better balance in my life. She's a very commonsensical woman, she's very calm and poised, and she had a fresh way of looking at the business because she was a journalist, and she's new here in the Burgundy area. She saw lots of details around the hotel, the business side, and she gave me two wonderful children, Béranger, who's three, and Bastien, who's 17 months. Béranger will be coming along later. I'm dying to see her running around saying, Daddy, it's really, really wonderful to see her playing. Cooking is my only passion. I'm here to bring happiness to others. I want to be the best. I've got three stars. If there were four, I'd be in the starting blocks. So quite sincerely, I say, let's hope things continue this way. I say, diners, guests, come to Loiseau's. You'll never eat better, because that's my one ambition in life. And perhaps one day I'll tell myself, well, why don't you go for a walk, play golf like your mates, and then I won't be so good. But for the moment, I'm at the top. That makes all the difference. And that's why people want to come to my place. Come to my place. I think that's certainly one of the things you associate with France, because you, you do eat well here. And I think, we, in fact, we were talking about it at lunch today, uh, because the 60 Minutes program did a, uh, a, a program on this phenomenon. Why They took the cameras to Lyon and asked that why a population that is eating supposedly all the, quote, wrong food suffers less from heart attack than Americans who are very diet conscious and yet are so often grabbing food on the run from uh, fast food. And I think there's maybe the missing ingredient is that in France people sit down and actually enjoy it. And maybe it releases some kind of enzyme which uh, contributes to people's health.